subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The chickpea or chana as we call it here in the Indian subcontinent is one of the oldest cultivated crops in the world. It is also called Bengal gram or garbanzo bean and we have managed to trace fossil evidence of chickpea cultivation to nearly 10,000 years ago in Jericho in Palestine which is the oldest continually inhabited city in the world. The chickpea is a staple in Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, Arabic and Asian diets. We've all eaten or at least heard of hummus and falafel. It's also a staple in Indo-Persian diets. Most of us regularly eat chole and chana masala or even sundal. India actually is the largest producer of chickpeas globally. It produces over 69% of the world's global production. We have multiple varieties of chickpeas as well. We have one which we know as Kala Chana or the Desi Chana also called black chickpea in the Indian subcontinent. We have the Garbanzo bean or the Kabuli Chana which is what hummus is made of and Dhokla is made from. And we have the Italian variety called the Chechi Neri. Chickpeas are also used to make desserts like Mysore Pak sometimes. They are used to make batter for fried stuff like pakodas and fritters. They used to make things like Burmese tofu. They're used for aquafaba which replaces egg in baking and they have a whole other variety of uses in all of these cuisines that they are a part of. Since they're such a big part of the global diet and will continue to be so for the foreseeable future, it is important to see how to optimize their production considering we're expecting massive crop failures to happen given the rate of global heating. In a new study, researchers including those in the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics in Hyderabad studied the genomes of 3,366 chickpeas. This is one of the largest crop genome sequencing findings and study and the results will help us hone our cultivation of the bean and improve its quality and resilience. In this video, we'll look at what the findings were from the study and what the genetics of the chickpea bean show about the history of its cultivation and its migration. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. From the findings, the researchers think that chickpeas were first domesticated in Anatolia in today's Turkey. Anatolia, also known as Asia Minor, is the westernmost part of Asia. Humans have settled here since at least 7000 BCE and it is also thought to be one of the candidate places where the Indo-European family of languages originated. Once the first cultivation of chickpeas here began, it was left as is and the farming practices were not improved for many thousands of years. In fact, almost for 9000 years. As a result, we're able to tell that all chickpeas in the world today have originated from specifically this region. This makes their genetic diversity low and thus they are more susceptible to climate change. From Turkey, the Kabuli Chana or the Garbanzo variety was introduced to India through trade routes and passed through the Mediterranean and also went to Africa. Since chickpeas are eaten more in non-Western nations, there hasn't been much research into genetically improving them as we have done so for other cultivated crops like corn that grow and are consumed more in Western nations. But we know that the pulse productivity worldwide has been stagnating for nearly 50 years and there is increasing malnutrition in poorer nations. In South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, chickpeas are an important source of protein, fiber and important micronutrients, so they are essential for food security. Thus, it is important to now breed chickpeas the optimal way to keep them going and not fail. So how does plant breeding work? Researchers and cultivators identify a specific trait that is favorable, say a resistance to a certain kind of bacterial disease or a fungal infection, and then use the ones that have the trait to cultivate more. So all the cultivars and all of the individual crops tend to develop this resistance. Of course, the flip side of that is that if the disease evolves and mutates, all the crops become susceptible to it once again and all of them are wiped out. Human cultivation also retained features like 
tougher outer coverings which made the beans inside last longer. So the researchers aimed to identify genes from both older and newer crops as well as domesticated and wild crops that will be beneficial to cultivated crops survival. The first thing that the researchers noticed was that the cultivation of the bean stagnated for about 9000 years from 10,000 years ago. And then once again there was a little bit of genetic diversity somewhere around 400 years ago. Of the 3366 bean sequences, 3171 were cultivated and 195 were wild. There were 8 species in total that were analysed. A total of over 29,000 genes were identified of which we had known of only about 1500 earlier. So using this genetic data, the researchers were able to track how we domesticated the chickpea and also how it travelled across the globe. The sequencing first found that we domesticated the chickpea for harder outer covering and that resulted from a specific mutation in a specific gene. Interestingly, the same mutation also occurred in regular beans like runner beans and also peas which resulted in a thick hard outer covering that preserved the insides, the beans, better. This was already previously identified in common beans when researchers studied how the common bean was domesticated in South America. In the study, the researchers also used genetic data to track how the chickpea migrated from Anatolia. There were two paths that the bean took. First, it went to South Asia and East Africa simultaneously. And the second pathway was up the mountains going to Central Asia and the Mediterranean region. As the bean migrated, there were some domestic crops and there were also wild chickpeas that grew in these regions. And the researchers studied both of them. Studying the genomes of both these domestic cultivated crops and the wild crops showed the researchers that there were many traits in the wild ones that could be beneficial in the domesticated crop and many in the domesticated crop which could be detrimental to their future. Their analysis revealed that nearly 80% of the bread crop variety lacked better genes or superior haplotypes that were present in the wild versions. They identified 56 different lines that could be introduced into breeding the chickpea to make it more resilient for human use. These, of course, can be done by natural breeding, but also by genetic modification. Genetically modifying foods and GM foods are here to stay, as they have been for a long time. Today, we already consume crops like corn, potatoes, soybean, which have all been genetically modified in one way or another. This is also where the future is. If humankind has to survive, we need to genetically alter our crops to make them suitable for our living habitat as we alter our own environment in extremely drastic ways, making the earth unsurvivable for not just our crops but also for us.